Disability Rights Florida, Knowing Your Rights Under the Baker Act. Hi, my name is Brian. I'm here to provide you with information about the agency I work for, Disability Rights Florida, and to provide you with information about your rights under the Florida Baker Act and ways in which complaints can be resolved. This information will help you become a better self-advocate. Hi, Brian. My name is Carol. What does Disability Rights Florida do? Disability Rights Florida provides information and referral. We investigate abuse, neglect, and rights violations, and we advocate for people with disabilities. What is advocacy? Advocacy is defending a cause or speaking up about issues or concerns. An advocate is someone who speaks or writes in support of someone else. Self-advocacy is people speaking up for themselves about their needs, wants, or wishes. What rights do I have? Everyone has some rights. The U.S. Constitution, the Florida Constitution, federal and state statutes and rules all give us rights, as do agency policies and court decisions. So if I have rights, how can I be forced to go into a Baker Act receiving facility? To be admitted to a Baker Act receiving facility, it must be believed that you have a mental illness and are a danger to yourself or others. You may also enter a Baker Act receiving facility on a voluntary basis to receive mental health treatment. When a person is admitted to a Baker Act facility, he or she is asked to appoint a representative who can be notified of the admission, upcoming court hearings, emergency situations, and recovery team meetings. So what rights would I have in a Baker Act receiving facility? Under the Baker Act laws, you have a right to be treated with respect, to be free of neglect or abuse, to have appropriate clothing, to receive three nutritional meals a day, to have freedom of movement unless restricted by a doctor or judge's orders, and to have fresh air breaks unless restricted due to medical or security reasons. The right to treatment includes being free from seclusion and restraint unless there is an immediate threat to self or others, to participate in recovery or treatment team meetings, and to help develop treatment and discharge plans. If I'm in a Baker Act receiving facility, can I be forced to take medication? If you have been found to be competent to consent to your own treatment, you have a right to be informed about the medications the doctor wants you to take. This includes the name, dosage, and side effects of the medications. You will need to sign consent forms for all mental health medications that you agree to take. This means that you also have a right to withdraw your consent to medication unless a healthcare professional or the court has found you to be incompetent to make such decisions. If that is the case, a substitute decision maker, known as a healthcare proxy or a healthcare surrogate, may be appointed to make mental health treatment decisions until such time as you agree to take medication or a court has appointed a guardian advocate to make mental health treatment decisions for you. Another situation where you can be forced to take medication against your will is if you become a danger to yourself or others. The last time I was in a Baker Act receiving facility, I was asked to fill out a personal safety plan. What is a personal safety plan and how is it used? Upon admission to a Baker Act facility, everyone is asked to fill out a personal safety plan. This plan tells staff members how to best deal with you when you become upset. It is also used to inform staff of past traumatic events and the effect that they can have on you. When I'm in a facility, do I have a right to talk to family and friends? You do, Carol. You have the right to talk privately by phone and during visitation, unless the communication is found to be harmful. You also have the right to receive and send private mail. You have a right to report abuse or neglect to the Florida Abuse Registry and to Disability Rights Florida at any time. You also have the right to call your attorney at any time. For all other calls, the facility must have a policy that explains when the phone is available for use. Most facilities will not pay for long-distance calls and may restrict calls to family and friends during treatment hours. If your right to communicate freely is restricted, you must be provided with a written notice which explains why you were placed on a restriction and how long it will last. The restriction has to be reviewed every seven days and either be extended or withdrawn. 
Brian, can I get a copy of my records from the facility? You have a right to reasonable access to your own medical record unless it is deemed to be harmful. Most facilities will not provide you with a copy of your record until you are discharged. They can charge you up to a dollar per page for copies. You may also give permission to other people or agencies to review your record at any time. Your medical records are considered confidential information and may only be released under certain situations. Once you've entered a facility, your parents or next of kin may receive limited information without your consent. If you want a family member or other individual to be able to speak with your facility staff or have access to your records, you need to fill out a release of information form. I've heard a little bit about Mental Health Advanced Directives. What are they? A Mental Health Advanced Directive is a document that you fill out when you can make good choices about your mental health treatment. It only goes into effect if your doctor thinks that you are not able to make informed decisions. Examples of what you could put in a Mental Health Advanced Directive are your choice of medication and treatment, how you react to restraint and seclusion, and information from your safety plan. You can also name someone to make mental health decisions for you if you are determined by a physician to be unable to do so. What can I do if I have a complaint about a staff member's actions, or if I believe my rights have been violated? Each facility must have a policy and procedure for handling grievances. The grievance process should be posted next to the resident telephone. If you make a complaint, you should receive a written response within about seven days. If you are unhappy with the response, you have the right to appeal the decision to the facility administrator or his designee. We recommend that you attempt to resolve any complaints or concerns by talking with staff, but you may request a grievance form from staff at any time you wish to make a formal complaint. If you have reason to question your placement in a facility, question a denial of a right or a privilege, or if you want to question a procedure not being followed, you have the right to file a petition for writ of habeas corpus or a petition for redress of grievance with the court. These forms are available to you by asking staff or a member of your recovery team. When I'm in a facility, can I still vote? You can. You have the right to vote in public elections if you are legally competent, eligible, and registered at the time of the election. What if I am placed in a Baker Act receiving facility and I believe I don't need inpatient care? You have a right to treatment that meets your needs in the least restrictive setting, so you could file a petition for writ and ask the court to release you to receive outpatient treatment. So if I'm involuntarily placed in a receiving facility, how long can they hold me there? You may be held in a Baker Act receiving facility for mental health evaluation for a period of up to 72 hours, not counting weekends and holidays. Before the end of that time period, you have to be released outright, released outpatient treatment, be permitted to stay at the mental health facility on a voluntary basis, or a petition must be submitted to the court asking that you be placed on involuntary inpatient status. If a petition for continued treatment is submitted to the court, you will be represented by an attorney appointed by the court unless you already have legal counsel. If a petition is filed with the court, the court has the following options. They can release you, continue the Baker Act hearing, order you to remain in the Baker Act facility for continued treatment, order an involuntary outpatient placement, or order you placed in a community residential treatment facility or a state mental health treatment facility. What is involuntary outpatient placement? A lot of requirements have to be met before a person can be placed on involuntary outpatient placement. The person must be 18 years of age or older, have a mental illness, be believed to be unable to survive safely in the community without supervision, and have a history of non-compliance with treatment. They must also have been involuntarily admitted at least twice to a receiving or treatment facility or have received services in a forensic or correctional facility within the last 36 months, or have been engaged in one or more serious violent behaviors or attempted serious bodily harm to self or others. They must also be unlikely to voluntarily participate in treatment, be in need of treatment in order to prevent a relapse or deterioration that would likely result in serious bodily harm to self or others, be likely to benefit from continued treatment, and all less restrictive treatment has been determined to be inappropriate or unavailable. 
If the mental health service provider has petitioned the court for involuntary outpatient commitment, a proposed treatment plan developed by the provider and the person is submitted for the court's consideration. The court may order involuntary placement or involuntary outpatient placement for a period of up to six months and prior to the end of the six months must review the person's status to determine if further commitment is needed. Brian, when being discharged, do I have any say in my discharge planning? You do, Carol. Discharge planning is supposed to begin upon your admission to a facility, and you have a right to be involved in your discharge planning. If I agree to voluntary inpatient treatment and I request discharge, what will happen? You would be discharged within three working days unless your doctor believed that you still met the criteria for involuntary placement, in which case a petition for involuntary treatment would be filed by the facility with the clerk's office. When I'm discharged, do I have to go to the treatment provider listed on my discharge plan? After a person is discharged, they may select a mental health treatment provider of their choosing, unless the court has specified a specific provider. We close our training sessions with an inspirational poem. This one was written by Duane Sherry. Recovery is not managing illness. It is discovering wellness. Recovery is not fixing what's broken. It's finding wholeness, meaning, and purpose. A love for life. Recovery is a journey, a reconnection to self, others, nature, and spirit. A willingness to forgive, an openness towards reconciliation, a search for peace. This poem was retrieved from the Hope for Mental Health Recovery website and can be found at www.recoveryhope4all.com. References The Florida Mental Health Act, or the Baker Act, Chapter 394, Part 1, Florida Statutes, The Mental Health Act Regulation, Rule 65E-5 of the Florida Administrative Code. These documents are required to be available for review at each inpatient setting. Important Numbers The Florida Abuse Hotline, 1-800-962- 2873. Disability Rights Florida, 1-800-342-0823, extension 4022. The Agency for Healthcare Administration in the Department of Health, 1-888-419-3456. Thank you for the opportunity to provide you with this information. Disability Rights Florida, 2728 Centerview Drive, Suite 102, Tallahassee, Florida, 32301-6298. Contact us toll-free at 1-800-342-0823 or fax us at 850-488-8640. You can also find us on the web at www.disabilityrightsflorida.org.